Airbus says Ghana is one of five countries in which the European aviation giant paid or attempted to pay millions of dollars in bribes in exchange for contracts. The result of that was nearly four billion pound sterling fine imposed by a court in Britain uh, said to be the biggest fine imposed. Crafts were procured from Dutch firm Airbus SE, which has been found guilty in shady deals in some countries across the globe. Investigations by the Serious Fraud Office in the UK led to the expose. Fines were imposed by the Royal Courts of Justice in its landmark judgment on Friday. The SFO focused its investigations on not only Airbus, but its partners in South Korea, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, Taiwan, Ghana, Colombia, and Mexico. Persons associated with Airbus, not exclusively its employees, allegedly offered very substantial sums of money by way of bribes to third parties in order to secure the purchase of aircraft by civil airline companies in counts one to four. In the case of Ghana, it involved the government between July 1, 2011 and June 1, 2015. Between 2009 and 2015, an Airbus defense company engaged in intermediary 5, a close relative of a high-ranking elected Ghanaian government official codenamed Government Official 1, as its BP in respect of the proposed sale of three military transport aircraft to the government of Ghana. A number of Airbus employees knew that intermediary 5 was a close relative of Government Official 1, who was a key decision maker in respect of the proposed sales. A number of Airbus employees made or promised success-based commission payments of approximately 5 million euros to intermediary 5. False documentation was created by or with the agreement of Airbus employees in order to support and disguise these payments. The payments were intended to induce or reward improper favor by government official 1 towards Airbus. Payments were eventually stopped due to the arrangement failing the due diligence processes required by the liquidation committee. While the first deal was under the presidency of the late John Evans Atamels, the second deal was under the presidency of John Dramani Mahama. Over 29 million euros is expected to be received from fines against Airbus in a case involving Ghana. The conduct is said to be a criminal violation of the international traffic in arms regulations. So we're bringing you the facts of uh, this uh, Airbus uh, implication pretty shortly and the references of it. And then we'll be getting reactions from both the NDC and MPP. And later we'll do some analysis of this. Uh, Winston Amwa will be joining me. But right now, let's speak with uh, Tony Dogbe, who is a member of the uh, Citizens Movement Against Corruption. Mr. Dogbe, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Now, uh, I am curious that the, this has brought up the corruption debate again, both the NDC and MPP have been pitching comes with their own rhetoric into this. While the NDC claims that corruption under the current MPP administration has been unimaginable, now the N MPP has taken this indictment uh, from the Airbus as an indication that the former administration uh, was worse. Would you say that these revelations, the revelations of uh, the Airbus, is actually, uh, it actually means anything at all to uh, Ghana's anti-corruption fight? I think, uh, uh, good, good afternoon to you and uh, your viewers. For me, I think it only affirms what Ghanaians have always suspected. Mm. You know, uh, I think when Ghanaians have always felt that there's too much corruption in our system, many of our government officials are using procurement to steal money, from uh, from us, the office is with the evidence. Because all this is done clandestinely, it's difficult to prove it. So for me, this is not just about one party or the other. Mm. It's just an affirmation of what Ghanaians have always suspected has been going on, that have always not had the evidence to back it up. Mm. So it's neither, for me, an issue of NPP or NDC. Mm. It's an issue of what has been going on. And of course, today, it is what may be happening under the NDC government. 
that has come to light. And so we don't know tomorrow what else will come to light of another government. And uh, a very quick one. I know that both the NDC and government have been reacting to this, but I want to stay on the anti-corruption tangent. Uh, if we look at the uh, government instructing the Office of the Special Prosecutor to launch its own investigations into this Airbus indictment, uh, do you think that this is uh, an appropriate response from the government of the day? I, I, yes, I think uh, since the government has set up the Office of the Special Procedure as the institution to deal with corruption, mm. it is only proper that the government respect uh, the case to the, uh, that office. And what I think, that I, when I read the government paper, was for him to leave with the UK and uh, possibly the US counterpart to see what he can deduce from that and maybe possibly what it can be used from here, from Ghana. So I don't think there's any other body that the government would have to take mm. this case to. Do you think so do, do you do you think this this instruction to the office of the special prosecutor is in order? I mean, I'm asking this on the back of the fact whether you get the sense that this is an appropriate response and reaction which will will inure to the benefits of the fight against corruption, really. Yeah, I, I think because the, the documents that have come out have not really been mentioned of me. You know, they just talked about consultant one or intermediary one and government official without any name. I think that is what the government is seeking for the uh, Office of the Special Prosecutor to go into. Because according to the judge, he has, uh, he or she has the name of this individual. But for human rights and certain other issues, they cannot put the names out for now. Mm. But I think that does not stop us as a country, our government going to ask them for their specific names. Mm. Uh, so, so I think at least we deserve to know right. who are these individuals. But maybe that cannot be put into the public domain for now. Mm. I know that from the very beginning you raised the fact that this uh, is actually a confirmation of what Ghanaians have always suspected. I want to uh, get your thoughts on whether you think this will go a long way in affecting the image of Ghana in its relationship with the international community. I, I, you know, I don't think the international community will be surprised by this. Because this is a game, the game that many multinational companies have used, both in terms of concessions and contracts to fling countries like ours. And Oxfam, for instance, has done studies that shows the amount of money that leaves the African country by all these kind of transactions. So it's not going to be new to uh, 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 international bodies, and I don't think it's, 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 it's again, I don't think it would be surprising. Again, it's something that is known, it's a common practice, you know, uh, that, that goes on. So I don't think it will necessarily affect our image. It's only a sense for meaning of these organized uh, 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 countries, but everybody knows. And they know some of this is more than we do. And sometimes we are deceiving ourselves when we think that uh, uh, others don't know, that they have the intelligence and they are able to fix some of these things. And sometimes they even know some of our officials who can be corrupted. Mm. You know, so for me, I don't think it's it, it just, it just for me, it's just an issue of when will our government officials keep us fair, mm. Mm. you know, and use some of these resources for the schools and hospitals and those as people are crying. Right. Uh, Mr. Dogway, so before you go, a quick one. I, I want to uh, find out what your expectations are moving forward on the outcomes of the investigations that uh, have been ordered by the government into this. So, I, I think uh, if we, the, uh, uh, civil society organizations and the media, know to, um, to continue asking for the eventual and final uh, uh, resolution of this. We need to know the names and the people who were behind it. And uh, 
um, I wish there could be more of such evidence for other procurement uh, uh, things that have been uh, deals that have been made in the name of this country. But for me, I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are many, many more other deals that have been made in our country of money that should have been used for something else. So I, I think civil society and the media is not good to sleep on this. We should keep it on the uh, uh, top front so that at least we can again uh, uh, expose what has been going on in this country. Right, uh, Mr. Dogbe, uh, thank you very much uh, for your time. That's uh, Tony Dogbe is the uh, member of the Citizens Movement Against Corruption. This is still a midday live. But like I promised you, let me take you through some of the key facts of this investigation so far. Uh, why Ghana has been implicated in this Airbus bribery scandal. So the deal for the procurement of uh, three aircrafts from Airbus by government of Ghana is from July of 2018. 11 to June of 2015 and Airbus according to the information uh, available from the courts uh, Airbus engaged a middleman the middleman has been uh, referred to as intermediary five connected to a high-ranking elected government official in brokering the deal. Airbus also, uh, the employees promised a total of 5 million euros as success-based commission to the middleman that is the uh, intermediary five and the court records also suggest that Airbus employees and the middleman forged documentation to support and disguise transaction which was intended intended to bribe a key government official and then due diligence audit found the transaction inappropriate and the UK court found Airbus liable for condoning uh, bribery. So uh, these were the facts of the matter. And then there were false documentation created by or with agreement of Airbus and its employees in order to support and disguise these payments that have been uh, raised. The, mem the payments were also intended to induce or reward improper favor by the government official one. Uh, towards Airbus. In all of these, uh, no names have been mentioned. As you already know, a government official one, intermediary five, and all of that. So uh, these are the key facts of what you should know about. This is still Midday Live, and I have Winston Amoa joining me. Uh, Winston, how are you, sir? Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, we're coping. We're coping. Yeah, great, great, great. So, so you <coughs> have read uh, extensively yeah. the uh, information that has been coming out on this uh, Airbus uh, thing. Would you say the, the, the facts in the court's ruling, with all the anonymities in it, uh, suggest anything at all? Well, if you look at the facts, and just like you talked about, if you look at the facts of the court's ruling, for instance, it makes it very clear that you know, the payments were intended to induce mm. or reward improper mm. favor. Now, if you look at the judgment, it talks about how um, intermediary five, together with intermediary six and seven, mm. came together to establish a company, Company D, and the company in the first instance was able to, uh, you know, liaise with government official one, whom here we're told that is an elected official, mm -hmm. and government official one was able to, you know, was a key decision maker, yeah. was able to see the deal through in the acquisition of two aircrafts for Ghana's military. Mm -hmm. Now, in the second instance, and having done that, then intermediary five mm -hmm. through company D has yeah. paid an amount of some 3.5 million mm -hmm. euros as commission, as the termed commission. Now, in the second deal, or in the second procurement, for instance, we're told that there are one or two issues. So senior officer 16, and mind you, uh, our viewers should bear with us because uh, so no there, names are be mentioned. No, names, no, really, no, no, but no but names are mentioned here. Before we go to senior officer 16 yes. and all of that, let's focus on intermediary 5. Yes. What was his role in all of this anyway? Well, so intermediary 5, uh, based on the documents that I have seen, um, we're told it was close, or is close to... Uh, then government official mm. one, mm. okay, uh, they have a bit of a relationship. And if you look at the documents, it talks about the fact that how intermediary five, uh, you know, was initially born in Ghana, mm. but lost touch with his roots until the late 90s when he reconnected. And all of these are captured in the court They're documentation. Captured. Anyway. They're captured mm. in there. So intermediary five's job basically was to be able to help Airbus SE get the government of Ghana 
to procure these aircrafts. You understand? Yes. Now, you read parts of the document that said that, you know, they actually then set up this company. And later on, it was realized that certain things were not adding up. Mm. And that is how come in the second transaction, Airbus SE then refuses to pay for it. I mean, they were expecting some in excess of 1 million euros, but that wasn't paid. But you would understand better if you look at the job that Intermediary 5 did in the second acquisition. Mm -hmm. So in the second acquisition, Senior Officer 16 mm -hmm. writes to Intermediary 5 and says that, my people do not take Ghana seriously. And I am paraphrasing here. My people do not take Ghana seriously. They think that this deal is not going to work. Intermediary 5 says, hold on a minute. I'm going to get to government official one. Then we would get back to you. He says, I have gotten to him. He says, bear with us. Give us a bit of time. Then senior officer um, 16 writes to the Ministry of uh, you know, Defense and Finance and blind copies uh, you know, government official one mm. and intermediary five. Mm. So all this while, when the negotiations were going on, they were in the know without the officials from the Ministry of Defense and Finance knowing that he knew about it. And then somewhere in uh, you know, uh, 2015, we're told that the uh, uh, government of Ghana is going to procure another you know, aircraft for the military. So Intermediary 5, uh, on the face of it, based on the initial agreement, the first is a one, real middleman. Is a middleman. Mm. Now, I just a bit of uh, documents that, uh, you know, if you look at um, the statement talks about, just a bit, let me just read a bit of it. Yeah. It says, uh, that's uh, point 0.53, I mean, count five Ghana if you get to point 0.53, and it says that um, false documentation was created by or with the agreement of Airbus employees in order to support and disguise these payments. And the payments were intended to induce or reward improper favor by government official one towards Airbus. Payments were eventually stopped due to the arrangements failing the due diligence process. As required so by payments were the, stopped. Payments, yes, payments were not stopped. made. No, so, so all of this so uh, back payments, and forth so we payments, have so, is so because 3, of 3. payments 5, intended to yeah, be so made. Three three point five million euros was paid initially, mm. and that was described as commission. Mm. Okay, so um, that's how it was described. Mm. But based on the court documents, also Airbus describes that as com commission. Mm. But based on the court document, these were intended to induce. Right. Uh, once but, we have uh, Felix of mm, sure. on the telephone line. But before we get to him, I want to ask you the NDC's response, yes. uh, signed by former Attorney General Minister of Justice, Mareta Brio Pong. Basically, was that necessary? Well, you know, around this time, it's very important to respond to some of these things. And people have gone to social media. Uh, making it look as though a certain personality, and I wouldn't want to mention mm. names here, uh, staking some money. Mind you, in the court document, it didn't say, it said they were intended, intended to, to, but it did not say mm. that anybody has indeed received money or that government official one mm. received money. It was intended to. I haven't seen in here whether those monies were received, but for intermediary five, six and seven who came together from company D, they received some money, which mm. was 5% commission mm. based on they facilitating the agreement. That's what it talks about. Right, Wilson, uh, thank you very much. Uh, let's quickly now get on to the telephone lines and speak with uh, Felix Ofosu Kwachi, who is a former uh, minister under the NDC administration. Thanks very much, sir, and uh, for joining us. So the NDC's response has uh, straight away been to deny that any money uh, was paid or anyone is culpable in uh, this deal. I, I want to have a fair understanding whether you are of the view that nothing wrong was done here. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I have had occasion to read in very exhaustive terms both the approved judgment mm. and the statement of fact. And nowhere in both documents is anybody's name mentioned as having engaged in wrongdoing of any form whatsoever. That is in relation to the government of God. Also, those documents absolutely make no allegations of improper conduct or bribery against any Ghanaian official. At best, the documents speak about a transactional relationship between Airbus on the one hand and an agent of their own choosing, who the documents refer to as. Intermediary sites. 
they say that this so-called intermediary site was related to a so-called government official what and leave it at that. So to the extent that no names are mentioned and no specific allegations of wrongdoing or bribery are leveled against any Ghanaian government official, it was absolutely intent that the NDC put that on record. Right. If for nothing at all to push back on a very irresponsible campaign by the Akufuado government using its silence and some surrogates in the media to attribute these claims to specific individuals. Mm. Therefore, I would urge the Ghanaian public to take the pains to read the documents and appreciate fully the contents of And they will come to the conclusion mm. that the claims being made in sections of the media and by highlands and surrogates of the Akufuado government have no foundation as far as the official court documents in the UK court are concerned. Mm. So, so what is your party's expectation of uh, how this is going to travel? I mean, uh, we know that, that there were deals that were uh, made by uh, Airbus SE, and uh, this was conditional upon an agreement, and uh, the names were not put out anyway. But the government of Ghana has gone ahead to order, or I should say instruct the Office of the Special Prosecutor to liaise with the Serious Fraud Office of the United Kingdom to uh, get to the bottom of this. Do you have any expectations at all of the outcomes? Well, ordinarily, it would be the right course of action for any responsible government to take. Mm. I am not too sure whether responsibility can be used in the same sentence as this Akufuado government, especially mm. the manner in which it has approached it. Even before government put out information, regarding its reference of this matter to the special prosecutor for investigation. It had sent out the silence and surrogates on a vicious and vile campaign of propaganda against specific individuals. So the government itself was seeking to prejudice the outcome of any investigation. Right. Therefore, one has to question the sincerity of this referral to the special prosecutor. That said, the social procedure has increasingly become the weakest link in the fight against corruption. And mm -hmm. whereas other agencies of state, like the Auditor General Department and the Shard, and even our courts, have been at the forefront of the fight against corruption, same cannot be said about the special prosecutor. Right. So there is some skepticism about whether or not he possesses the world without or capacity to look in this matter, to look into this matter in a fair, impartial and exhaustive manner. But I would hope that he has such capacity. But at the very least, it will help clarify the issues for anybody who may have a genuine that. But right. we in the NDC are absolutely clear in our minds that no one green has location on the part of any government official who said under the NDC administration. So, 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 so if, if I understand yeah. you right, if you suggest that no wrongdoing was occasioned by any minister under the period, uh, the period of uh, uh, 2011 to 2015 or so, uh, and the UK uh, courts have gone ahead to fine Airbus to that tune of uh, almost four billion pounds sterling, there appeared to be a disconnect. If no wrongdoing was occasioned, uh, why would the courts go ahead and issue fines? And Airbus has actually acknowledged? Well, the, the reason is clearly spelled out in both documents. And I would like to imagine that you have read this. They say that Airbus made what they call success-based commission, commission payments to its own business partners, in which in this case is referred to as intermediary funds. Now, it is a purely transactional arrangement between Airbus and its intermediaries. Because the government of Ghana did not engage any intermediary in this transaction. So if Airbus has made payments to an intermediary, which the UK judicial system or authority believes to be irregular and offensive to OECD rules and UK law, it is entirely within their domain right. to take such appropriate action as will be commensurate with what they perceive to be offensive. But as far as the government of Ghana uh, is concerned, that is at the time of the NDC administration. Um, there is absolutely nothing to answer because the court documents themselves do not make any allegation was answered. We only came out 
so that well-meaning members of the public are not taken in by the issue right. of the vow and show something by the official government using the surrogates to create the wrong impression. Right. Uh, so thank to answer your question in a nutshell, it is a matter purely between Airbus and its intermediary and the UK authorities. Right. Uh, Ms. Ofosukwache, we're grateful for your time. Thank you extremely. Uh, Ms. Ofosukwache is a former uh, minister under the former NDC administration.